Okay, Exeter Library. So it's Phillips Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire. And <clears throat> Phillips is a, a fancy prep school, and in the old days, Andover, Exeter, Choate, and so the rich old families would get their kids in there and that was guaranteed to go to Harvard. Uh, so it's part of that pipeline. Now it's, they do everything they can to get minorities and it's about half guards. So it's not, it, it's no longer a boys prep school the way it was traditionally. And they needed a new library. Now Khan did both the library and the dining hall. And nobody talks about the dining hall, uh, including me. <laughs> uh, whatever. You go up there and look at the dining hall. But the library is quite important. The uh, first thing we want to say is, here's the corner of the library, here's the dining hall, here's the library. Let's jump ahead. And <clears throat> what we have is, first of all, a ooh, where's the ground floor? Ground floor is here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight-story building that looks like a four-story building. So he's trying to, to uh, reduce the scale because it's mostly three-story buildings on the campus. So this is a real blockbuster dropped into the middle of the campus. But what we have is a central space surrounded by, it's called the balconies, that have the bookshelves in them, they're called stacks. <clears throat> then surrounded by an outer corridor with study carrels at the windows. So study carol is a little desk embedded into the wall at the perimeter. So Khan says, I never found a book in a card catalog, today you would say, computer. I want to go in the stacks and walk around and feel the books. So the library should have a central space in the light with great tables where the librarian will leave books open to seductive passages. And the user will find the book, take it, and take it to the light. So here's our central space. We take it to the light, which is the perimeter of the building. And we don't want the bookshelves to be hit by direct sunlight because it will not only bleach the color on the covers, but actually chew them up. Sun's very aggressive stuff. So, so with that in mind, we see that we've got one, two, three, four, five stories instead of eight, because these are actually two stories combined into one. And here are the, these carters are double height. Here are the study carrels with these little windows here, and these big windows let in light to illuminate the space, and then this little window here brings light right onto my desk. He's using teak here, the way he did in, thanks, salt. And the teak's in bad shape, it's been varnished, so it doesn't look as nice as it used to. Now we see all this brick. There's gonna be a story here. The brick that we saw on medical towers was on the towers, the brick was a veneer. We were poured in place concrete towers, the bricks just put on like paint as a veneer. 
And then under the windows in the pavilions in the medical towers, the brick is brick, brick and block masonry wall. Here, this is a structural column, a masonry structural column. Now, we've seen brick, but it's brick and block. This is an arch. It's a flat arch. You might just be able to see there's a slight angle to these bricks here. So this is wedged in as an arch. So the outer perimeter of this building is all brick. It's not a concrete building with brick pasted on as a veneer, but it's a concrete building in the center with a brick structure surrounding that. Now, you'll notice something only when I point it out. Look at how the thickness of this, and look at the thickness of this. This is thicker, right? Well, it gets thicker each time you go down. Thin, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker. You don't know, it's so subtle, you don't notice it until it's pointed out. The fact of this getting thicker allows this angle here for this to be wedged in as a flat arch. It's called a jack arch. Why does it get thicker as it goes down? Pardon? It's carrying more weight. The, this one's carrying the whole building. This one's only carrying a little bit of roof. So each time you go down, it's carrying more weight. Now, what architects would usually do is make the same column all the way down and just increase the amount of steel uh, as you get closer to the ground. And that will increase the strength of the column. But it's easier to keep them all the same size so that everything, everything you're doing will line up. You don't want to have slightly bigger desks as you go up because the column's slightly smaller. But Khan wants to show what's happening. Let me show you another example of that. So Khan believes that, A, it's the right thing to do, and B, you will, on a subtle level, pick it up. So here is Yale British Studies. We'll see it next week. Here's, uh, he makes a grid on the floor in travertine and then rug in between. And notice this column is smaller than the grid. This is we're up on the top floor. Now, should put these on the same slide. Now, we're down on a lower floor. See here, this column is smaller. So here we are with this smaller column. But when we get down to a lower floor, the column is the full size of this grid. Now, 99% of people won't notice, oh, when I saw the column on the top floor, it was thinner, and now I'm down on the second floor, it's fatter. But he believes subconsciously you'll pick that up. You'll appreciate the growing weightiness of the building. Vincent Scully, um, an important critic, he just died um, in his 90s. He wrote the first book on Khan, and you'll see him in movies on Khan, maybe in My Architect by Nathaniel Khan, where he says, Khan and I were in uh, Russia looking at the Kremlin, the churches there. And I said, look at how the forms go up to the sky. And Khan says, look at how the forces come down to the ground. So we as architects are aware of buildings are heavy things, and how we handle that is part of our architectural thinking. So Khan's showing us this growing force <coughs> as the building comes down and the columns get thicker. And these are just, these are not just, in other words, 
very often in modern architecture, this would be, um, the facade might not even be structural. The Corbusier's five points toward a new architecture talks about the long window, that we can make long windows because the columned, interior column grid is doing the structure and the facade is free to have big long windows. Well, Kahn's bringing back, this is not free. This is the structure of this part of the building. So, on a typical floor, now, Kahn shows us, this is brick, this gray stuff, it's hatched, and the black is concrete. So both the brick and the concrete are solid, but he wants to tell us that concrete is denser than the brick. And <clears throat> this is his exterior brick columns. These are beefed up. These span across. And this beam spanning from here to here is brick. Now the floor plate is concrete. I bet he investigated making that floor plate tile, which they did in the uh, 1890s. But uh, the floor plate is concrete. So um, concrete, concrete, giant beam spanning across, we'll see in a minute, open space. <laughs> then, uh, Concrete columns carrying this floor plate. And then brick column, brick column. And here are two little desks at the window. So this is brick. It shouldn't be black, but by the time I make this slide, it's um, the hatching disappears. Yeah? Why is the staircase? On the inside, the second, uh, the the staircases. Oh, yeah. well, these are the staircase, staircase elevators, toilets, toilets. So, remember the bands of the building when we looked at the Goldenberg House, uh, open court, then a band of corridor then a band of servant, mm -hmm. kitchen, bathroom, closet, and then a band of living. Same thing. Here's the open space, band of corridor, band of servant, bookcases, and stairs, toilets, elevators, and then a band of reading cabinets. So he's got a zone a uh, series of concentric circles, uh, or squares, uh, zones for each of these functions. And then this is the, you come in, and this is a, a ground floor, low ceiling reading room, but the main space, you go up this grand stair to the main space, open all the way up to the light. The light comes in, bounces off these beams and into the space. This beam is 19 feet deep. And all it does is hold a little post to hold up the ceiling. But he wants that big structure. And here's the study carol buried in the brick exterior wall. So, we come in. So this is a concrete building sleeved into a brick building and every surface you touch is wood except for the stair this is a port in place concrete stair and then you touch marble but he's telling you this is not a marble stair it's a concrete stair the marble is a veneer and he shows you that right here here's the concrete here's the thin layer of marble for you to touch so your hand doesn't touch the concrete. Then we come into the main space, look up, and here's this X of this 19 foot deep, huge X beam. In working on my new con book, I got the working drawings for the buildings. They're in the 
archive, Khan's Archive the University of Pennsylvania. I actually measured that thing in the working drawings. Now, these cutouts are just decorative. Uh, yes, this is bracing, but this isn't really needed. A beam across here and a beam across here would do the job. But he likes, he's been turned on by Rome and he likes playing with these big forms, cutting out these big circles. Now here's something interesting. When I first saw this photo, what do we see here? Those are bookshelves and what have we noticed? They're empty. So my thought was, oh, this is a photograph, the building's new, they haven't completely moved in yet. It turns out that what are we, what's the one thing we know that a library does? Keeps getting new stuff, it expands. <laughs> and you know, with the New York Public Library, keeps building deeper and deeper underground vaults under Bryant Park, and then it's got half the books in New Jersey, in big warehouses. So you want a book, you gotta wait a day for them to go get it. Uh, but, you know, if you look, how many books does New York Public Library have? Well, twice as many as they had 50 years ago and four times as many as they had 100 years ago. <laughs> they keep adding books. Well, maybe we'll get over that with digital. But so far, and it, you know, every magazine you subscribe to sends you a new one every month. Unless it's Time Magazine, they send you a new one every week. And then every six months you have to send them out to be bound. And then you have all these bound copies of all your magazines in the library. So, Remember what I said about Khan seeing the whole organism. He doesn't see a city as something that keeps expanding, but being a body, mind, soul. Mosque, legislature, sports stadium. Well, you can't say, well, we'll add the body later. <laughs> what kind of a human being is that? What kind of an organism is that? So, um, he doesn't see the life. So if one of us were designing a library, you guys did, uh, he might think in terms of how it's going to expand. Maybe you'd make it something of linear modules that you could keep adding on to. But how are you going to handle expansion? Khan isn't going to. This building is complete. It's a cube. You don't add on to a cube. Um, so he puts in a bunch of extra shelves so that for the next five years, 10 years, whatever, uh, there'll be room to expand. Well, now it's been 50 years. Now what do you do? Well, maybe it's digital and they don't need as much as they used to. I don't know. But that's what he's doing. And you can decide, is this notion, see, a, a philosophy of becoming would say the library is continually becoming. It keeps expanding. And the technology changes. Just at the time I got to school, they introduced microfiche. So microfiche is like microfilm, and it's little squares about that big of a page of a book. So high resolution. You could put it in a reader, and you can read it. So stuff that they've got, like the census, is billions of pages. It's in microfiche. Well, now they don't do that anymore. It's all digital. We used to go to, I used to go to the library here, like when I did my book. I needed uh, everything the New York Times said about Khan. Uh, so I go over there, and I load these spools of microfilm, you know, <laughs> going like this, going through the reader. Then the whole New York Times is online. I just do it at home. You just, you just go to New York Times, put in John Lobel. You can see everything you They've said about John Lobel, if anything. Uh, it's doing a, my father left a book. I finally got around to publishing it. And for the, you know, oh, what, did, what, what, what job did he have at Scurious and Commission? Put it in the New York Times, Nathan Lobel. See what it says. Uh, I don't have to go to the library and go through, guess what decade it is, and get that roll of <laughs> microfilm and crank through it, you know looking at obituaries. Uh, 
Uh, you just put in search and it, it, it looks at every New York Times for the past 150 years. Uh, well, that's a new technology. Did Kahn design a building that these new technologies, as they come along, could accommodate them? Or did he assume we're all going to be worshipping at the printed book forever? Uh, so uh, one of you know, the great buildings of all time, one of my favorites, is Sarna's TWA building at Kennedy Airport. Well, that didn't last very long, because what's the one thing that air traffic does? It expands. <laughs> you know, uh, that building is like, was totally inadequate 40 years ago. Um, I, whenever I had a chance, I always flew TWA just to have a chance to go through the building. Uh, but it's now going to be the entrance of a hotel. So fortunately, they've kept it. But there's no way it can be an airport. The airports have to be able to expand. That building can't expand. How do you expand the building? So, uh, okay, that's a digression for Kahn's notion of being the building is a complete entity. It's not something that unfolds over time. So here's an attempt at a really good shot. It's hard to, this is a hard photograph to make because, now I'll just tell you something about the building. There's a band of windows here. The light from this band hits this and reflects into the space. Kahn was too optimistic about how much concrete could reflect light. You know, even though the concrete's gray, it absorbs 90% of the light and reflects 10%. So it's, it's kind of dark in there. Uh, my guess is it's darker than he had anticipated. I think these are smoke vents in case of fire. Let the smoke out. And here, if you're walking along here and you lean on this railing, you're leaning on wood. So concrete building sleeve into a brick building and every surface you touch is wood except for that travertine stair. Now here's a, another super wide angle, but now the light's not good. This is a beautiful photograph. I got it from some book. Uh, this one is a wider angle lens. You get a better sense of the space, but uh, it's kind of dark. OK, now we've picked up our book from the table here which the library doesn't do, but that was Khan's idea, or from the shelf. And now we go to every student gets their own, well, I don't know how they're assigned, but students get their own little study car. I'm sure they're not enough for all of them. And it's very personal. Um, now let me just see something. <laughs> These are, fortunately they don't use tags, but they tape pictures on here, pictures of pandas or pets or friends or whatever. And it, these surfaces are just covered. And what the photographers do is they take all of them off, take the photograph, they put them all back on. So one of my students, when he was up there, photographed it. Every time I go there, I forget to take pictures. Uh, but um, um, these are typically covered with stuff. So this is own little study carol. You read your book here, and the sun starts to shine on your book. There's a little shutter here. You push it over. And then the general space is lit by this big window up here. This window up here. And this is your personal little window. And then, see, this is a two-story space. Here it's two stories. So here you see this. There's a one-story of stacks and then another story of stacks. You want the ceiling to be kind of low where the stacks are. You don't want books on, at eight feet. <laughs> you want to just have it as low as you can get it and not bump your head, which gives you a chance of being able to reach the top shelf. So here's another shot of that. Here we see these, uh, the brick and then this beautiful detailing of the wood oak uh, detailed into the brick. Then the outside surface is teak and this large window above. And see this column? 
and then a beam. This beam is brick, and the bricks are fanned out on slight angles, which makes them a flat arch. So here we see the uh, study carol space two stories, uh, and then we see the lower floors for the <coughs> book stacks. Here's the central space. Here we come up to this monster beam, much bigger than it has to be, but Khan wants the, um, he just likes uh, the sexy big beam. And then these are seminar spaces. Khan considered this his atonement to brick. Here, this brick is spandrel and fill wall. You can't have floor to ceiling glass. You couldn't in his day, but today they can. And the reason is you get a fire here, it'll break the glass, come up, and then break the glass and go in up here. And we don't want the fire to spread. Now today they have floor to ceiling glass in apartment buildings in New York, and it's they now have make glass that is super. It won't break. Uh, but this is not this kind of glass. So this is brick on the end, brick space, concrete block. This is poured in place concrete with a brick veneer on. Now, first of all, these bricks look identical. He says, wait a minute, these are two totally different things. Why am I making them look the same? And in addition, he says, I'm using brick as a veneer. What is that? He says, bricks built Rome. Bricks are great stuff. They, they, they want to show off what they can do. So here, this brick is not a veneer. It is a brick structure. It's the column. Now, it's not just brick. It's brick and block. I'll show you that in a minute. Brick, block, space, brick. Remember in masonry wall, you always need a space. That handles the moisture. Moisture's coming off our bodies, hits the wall, goes through the brick, condenses in this space, which is cold, if it's winter, and then it's going to run down and feed out through a flashing. So it's got to be flashing right there. So I spent a day with the engineer who uh, it had a major renovation about 10 years ago. And um, he said, we would have preferred brick space block brick, have the space on the outside, not the inside. Uh, any moisture coming from the outside, you're going to catch it right away and get it back out again with the flashing. In addition, they had to redo all the flashing. Well, that's a bitch because they have to rip out this brick, put in the flashing, but this brick is holding the building up. <laughs> so they took out the brick one third at a time, put in the new flashing and put the brick back. Today, they make flashing out of plastics or uh, copper coated with lead that's going to last forever. The roofing they redid with this and when this building was built, it's five ply, felt, tar, felt, tar, five times. Now it's this plastic that's going to last forever. Hopefully. Let me see. Is that the last slide? Okay. Uh, somebody want to get the lights? Any questions about Exeter? One thing about Khan that Carpenter and Khan, that they are didactic architects. So what does didactic mean? Teaching. In other words, every building is a lesson in how to put a building together. So when um, my explanation of this building was an explanation of how it's put together, <laughs> um, I didn't mention the mechanical. 